and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. I'm your host, Jake. Today, I am joined by Ben on my left. Hello. I am probably not on Jake's left. No, I accounted for that. I accounted for that. And on the other side is Tom. Hello. Uh, how is our week in Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, let's start with you boys. Uh... We haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh. We've done a lot of rush dueling recently. Oh yeah, we've done a yes, lot. Yes, but it's not to say it's been a Yu-Gi-Oh void weekend, is yeah, it? No, so we've been tracking trying to build rush duel at every possible opportunity. <laughs> it uh, Rush duel is a lot more expensive than I gave it credit for. So Yeah. Uh, and the cards are quite hard to find as well. Yeah, like a lot of decks mm-hmm. just play like the same staples. So like all these super rares are just like 8 to $10 cards each. And it's made things a little awkward, but uh, we're getting there. Prawn Man, we found it for the cheapest today, and then Tom decided not to buy it. I want to buy the play also because everything's warped here. Prawn Man was nine dollars, Tom. It's warped. It's like eighteen dollars back. I would pay eighteen dollars at Akihabara. You could have just bought the Prawn Man. Uh, yes. Um. Wait, did we do a locals before we left that hasn't been on the podcast? Yes, no. No. Tuesday didn't fire, did it? Tuesday didn't fire. Did we do a podcast after last Sunday? Yeah. And I won locals. It was just, yeah, it was just you and I. Ah, We were on the pod. Yes. Well, I won locals then. Rescue Ace, best deck. Let's go. Let's not get a crotch shot in on this podcast. Um, (laughs) So, yeah. Um, Not on the TCG, after hours. So, (laughs) we've just been hunting, like, relentlessly for for TCG products here. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that that I've picked up. Uh, Today, I managed to find in Osaka the uh, Dark Magician Girl Magic Cylinder uh, 20th Anniversary playmat from five years ago. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I picked that up for 100 bucks. Yeah, I, I saw it and it was on the spot, like, I will buy this right now. Um, outside of that, Very we nice. haven't really bought much, like, regular card game product. I bought a Dark Magician. Oh, yeah, we each bought a Dark Magician. Um, I bought... You what bought... language was it in? Tom got Portuguese, I got, uh, Spanish. So I got... What was it, Spanish? I got... Oh, was it, was it Mag- Maggio... Uh, no, Spanish, I okay. think. It was, like, Maggio Obscuro. They were mm-hmm. both first at originals. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going like... to say what Tom's is. Got, I will um, not say my name. The name of no. the one I purchased... <laughs> Yeah, um, that's probably the only actual like TCG slash OCG product that we've bought outside of Rush Tools. I come here with the plan to buy Max Rudy Rescue Ace. It doesn't it's exist. just sold out everywhere, like literally yeah, everywhere. It's Max funny Rudy that Rescue when it's Ace actually meta out. in the OCG right yeah, now, like, that getting your hands on it would be difficult. When it's the best deck, it's uh, impossible to find. Turns out, um, I had this thought sorry to cut you off i had this thought the other day um like you didn't really like the tier uh format because you didn't like playing tier and you didn't like playing against tier so quick question how are you going to go in rescue ace mirrors when they become prevalent oh that's fine it's okay is it (laughs) yeah it's fine (laughs) it's not luck based on what's getting flipped off top of the deck I don't know. I feel like you're going to not like it. It's going to be fine. And who else is going to play Rescue Ace? Are you going to play Rescue Ace, Jake? Probably not. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully there's other options. Good luck with that. Nah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, anyway. Yeah, that, that's been most of our adventure. We bought some cool things. Uh, and yeah. That's, we'll probably do like a full thing when we're back in person in a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when we... I have power again, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we haven't mentioned that. Oh, yeah. Should uh, probably Jake address isn't, that. He's in, like, the <laughs> kind of dark here. He's going to be... He's a floating head right here <laughs> where the window is. is being replaced by uh, Dark Side Jaker. It is a good view as well. It's a yeah, good view. Yeah, coming to the... you straight from the set of Blair Witch Project 3. The camera um, doesn't pick up so the yeah. view here of Osaka, but it's been replaced by Jake's face, so you didn't get to see it either. Um, so yeah, uh, we had this planned for last night uh, when I had power, oh, yeah. uh, but Ben got too drunk and we couldn't. So I, now we have to do it tonight when I don't have power and Ben sober. I posted this in the Discord, but I got really drunk watching the World's Final. Um, I had, for context, I had to go get him dinner from yeah, 7-Eleven. Tom had to go and get me sandwiches from 7-Eleven to try and get me to sober up. 
All that did was make me sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, 7 Eleven sandwiches are really good here. 7 really Eleven here is just really good. 7 Eleven here is OP. Yep. Oh, yeah, we I also mean, if you one. want high chews from your local 7 Eleven, oh, good luck because yeah. um, those are all gone. Oh, we didn't, I got, didn't talk about a high chew adventure. Um, yeah, that's so, why I mentioned it now. <laughs> yeah, me and Tom went all over Tokyo looking for the 7. 7-Eleven promos. So, it was one per person per store. You had to buy three Haichu products to get one promo. Keep in mind, the Dark Magicians were gone everywhere. So, the seven cards were Dark Magician, Buster Blader, Dark Paladin, Marshmallow, then a Rushdoll's version of uh, Gaia, Curse of Dragon, and Gaia the Dragon Champion. Well, they're all Rustle promos, aren't they? No, no, no. The, the first four are regular OCG product, then the other three are Rustle. Oh, are they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought they were all Rustle. No, no they're okay. not all Rustle. So, we searched everywhere, and the day it was supposed to release, we went to the three 7-Elevens near our yeah. hotel. All of them were just like, we don't know what you're talking about. And we're like, okay, no problem. Um, so, we then went... So we, we gave up and we were like, oh yeah, they must have already sold out. Next morning we walk into 7-Eleven because there's a 7-Eleven... Every 50 metres So there's so. There's literally one 50 metres from our yeah. hotel. We walk into that one first thing in the morning and like I see this guy who I was like, you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player. <laughs> I'm going to follow you. And I followed him and they had this little stand set up with like all the promos except Dark Magician. Well, there they were missing Dark Magician... Dark Paladin and Bloss and Buster Blader. So they only had the Marshmallow and the three Rushdoll promos left. Um, so we, I was like, oh, sick. So I grabbed the first one. Message Tom was like, hey, they've got them. Tom comes out of the hotel. Then the adventure begins. We go to the next 7-Eleven, which is 20 meters down the road. Got the next promo. Then ventured to another one that was in Akihabara, which was sold out already. Which is I, don't, like, I don't think they even had them. Yeah, I just don't think they ever got them. Um, then we were like, well, today we're going to be going out to, um, I can't remember where we were going that day. Um, all the second-hand stores. Yeah, we were going out to, uh, uh, Shimo Kitazawa. We are going out to Shimo Kitazawa. But we were like, oh, let's stop in, because you had to go through Tokyo. And so we are like, oh, we'll stop in at Tokyo and we'll go to the Pokemon Center. So we go to Tokyo and, like, literally every 7-Eleven we're stopping and we're picking up promos, but no Dark Magicians anywhere. We get to the Pokemon Center, and I'm checking Google Maps, and it says there's meant to be a 7-Eleven in, like, around the Pokemon Center in Tokyo, and we're like, we can't find it. Maybe it's in the skyscraper. So, we go around, and we go in, like, the back entrance, and, like, the lady who's, like, the guard to stop you from getting into the skyscraper is like, oh, Pokemon Center, you're at the wrong entry, you have to go outside and wait. And we're like, no, no, 7-Eleven. So... We jump in, like, she's like, oh, yeah, okay, 7-Eleven, this way. Shows us the elevator, and she's like, sixth floor. Like, okay, we're going under the sixth story of a, effectively, it's a salaryman complex, to go to a 7-Eleven, which was just, like, a private 7-Eleven for employees of this building. We get to the floor, and they have the Dark Magician promos. Like, we were probably the first people to walk in there that day that were after the Haichu and Yu-Gi-Oh product. So, that was insane. We, like, walk up, we like, each grab a Dark Magician, and, like, the guy behind the counter is just like, how do you... How, who are you people? And we're like, oh... <laughs> how did you three, get in here? Three, three high you, please. Here's my Dark Magician. <laughs> and then, like, we went to leave and go back the way we came, and then a, a guard came up to us and we're like, oh, if you want to go to the Pokemon Center, by the way, there's a back entrance here. And we're like, sick? Awesome. Sorry? Um, yeah. So there was, like, there's a hidden entrance to the Pokemon Center. Are you sure this person was a security cent- a guard? Like, I'm pretty sure she just helped you break into two places. Yeah, they pretty pretty much did. But the, the security guard outside of the 7-Eleven was like, oh, if you want to go to the Pokemon Center, this elevator takes you down, but the elevator is locked until 11 because the Pokemon Center doesn't open to 11. So he's like, at 11, the button will work. And I'm like, okay, cool. This is, like, 5 to 11. So 11 rolls around. We hit the button, sneak in the back entrance of the Pokemon Center. Easy. It was, it was a good trip. What the fuck? We have so much Haichu, though. I don't know. I, the word Haichu <laughs> Honestly, gives me bring, PTSD. Honestly, bring it back to me. I will happily eat all of it. See, here's the issue, is that Tom's run out of space in his luggage. And it's there's Ship a whole bunch over. of space being taken Ship up it over. by Haichu. 
Ship it. Uh, Ship it. Uh, look, it I'm just me. gonna plan on eating it in the hotel room over the next ten days. This is gonna be a high chew. There is vacation. that. Yeah, high chew time. High chew recommendations. High chew time. High chew review. We got okay. all the high chew. We have um, so much high chew. So yeah, do I chat about my week now? Yeah, talk about yeah. your week, Jake. Yeah. Uh, so on Tuesday, locals was again cancelled. Again, we're going through teething problems with new store ownership and trying to work out new employees, all that kind of nonsense. Um, we um, did get a locals, locals over, over at, at the other store again this Thursday, uh, just past. Um, did I end up winning? Yes, I think I did. This is yes, what I, I did end up winning. Like, I uh, didn't get anything from my OTS, but Luke got a Ulti Fenry. Um, and I did pull the Cosmic uh, Quasar Synchro Secret thing, so I've got that as well. Um, but then Sunday rolls around, Locals is happening, um, and I decide, as I usually do, to buy a few packs before um, the round starts. And I pull this, the Magicians oh, of Unity shit. and Faith. I didn't know you got that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you didn't see that in the chat. Yeah, I put that in the chat. Um, so, yeah, that was a nice little uh, surprise. Uh, pack so, cards are $1,000 um, here, by the way. Sorry? That card's $1,000 here. Yes. We went to a shop today and they were selling it for $1,000. Oh, the OCG one or the TCG? The OCG. The OCG one. Oh, okay. They probably won't buy this one. Um, so, yeah, I'm currently we also can't sell cards people to, to sell this little guy uh, and make myself a tiny little profit. Um, also came second on Sunday with uh, Unchained. Uh, deck's quite fun. Um I think some people just sort of give up, um, even though the deck pretty much does the same thing, like all of their second effects read the same, it's like if you destroy them, they float. Uh, people kind of got sick of that and they're like, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I, I just don't want it <laughs> anymore. I don't want to think about it anymore. Um, just remove them other what ways. What deck down Hmm? Just remove them other ways, it's fine. Yeah, well, that's what people ended up working out. It's just like, oh yeah, if I spin them or send them, it's fine. Um, but yeah, sometimes I didn't give them a choice. Um, yeah, um, other than that, I've been playing a bit of Master Duel as well, uh, ranking up a little bit, uh, now the new season's sort of underway, so, yeah, it's all, it's all coming together. Um, and then, yeah, as we're about to chat, we, uh, sort of were watching, uh, Worlds over the weekend as well. Worlds was actually not that bad. Like, yeah, it was weird. They were, like, there were some aspects of it I expected, some of it was a little odd. Yeah, the like the Swiss factor was interesting. Like they were always going to do like the big fancy thing. They at least normally in the past have done this like stupid ass setup. Well, it's not stupid ass setup, but they normally have like general Swiss being played in the back room somewhere. And they normally at least mm. put one match on the stage the entire weekend, whereas this time they were like, "No, nah, we're going for like this huge grand stage. We're not going to put any matches on the stage. We want to save it for the final to unveil it." Which Makes sense, but at the same time, maybe don't have the venue you're streaming from look like a school. Or a basement. Yeah, it it looked like an office building, and it probably was. Like, it just looked bad. And it's one thing to be like, oh, yeah, we want to save, like, the sort of grandiose part for the, the grand finals and all that kind of thing. But I wouldn't show the rest of it yeah like maybe... at least make some attempt of disguising the fact that it's in like a chemistry lab from a high school they probably should have put up like those promo uh screen roll yes. things behind them just yeah. to like they should have done better that. to screen it yeah because like imagine you've gone through all that effort as a player you've flown out to japan you're ready for your thing and then they just usher you into like a uh, an office space and be like there you go sit down like like it it probably does feel a little dejecting to be like, oh, this is it? This is the thing that I've put all my time and energy into? According to Bowden, though, like, it, it was an environment designed to try and get the most competitive play out of people. Like, they took away all distractions and were just like, um, yeah, this is okay. what you are doing. Focus. So, uh, apparently everyone had a really positive experience. Like, they were all brought yeah. over here by Konami. They were treated well. Like, we bumped into uh, Joshua Schmidt and Dinkabui at uh, Radio Kakan. Um, oh, yeah. They were all brought over ahead of time, given a couple of days to, like, look around and, like, for example, go to Akihabara, get whatever they needed to get. And then, yeah, they were put into this just hyper-competitive, very... It's a very stale environment, but it's an environment with no distractions. They were all given tons of space they couldn't like overhear or lean on to like other people's tables um yeah they were all given 
the the best environment possible to perform i bet i, I guess hmm. yeah that's one way of looking at it i suppose um so yeah on the final day um i've got a little bit of a top eight uh sort of cut here um i did have a nice little thing here before but um yeah we're working off um bare bones here with a lack of power um but basically you've got um a couple of uh dragon link tenny sod soul vanquish soul and a couple of rika san avalon um in the top eight i can't remember if there was anything else no it was it was just those it was yeah interesting to see people's deck choices and how quickly yeah. it all fell apart like apparently there was a large amount of vs players there but the only issue is that if you know how to play against vs it's pretty easy to beat and all mm -hmm. of these competitive players just cooked it <sighs> yeah um because i know it wasn't just the thought of us in sort of the um cowboy sort of sphere but a lot of people did have their money on labyrinth to take this one out just because it was a deck that wasn't really hit in any capacity it still had a lot of powerful cards like eradicator tom was all in on um lab. <laughs> hmm? tom was all in on lab yeah and Trap it deck. just didn't have much of a showing like it had some in the lower tables um but yeah overall it really didn't have much representation at all um yeah like Rika San Avalon, there's uh, realistically, it's mainly a lot of Euro players that tend to be yeah. on that like, particular deck. Jessica is a very good pilot of it, but again, it's it's oh, a situation where if you know how to beat it, it's fairly easy to beat. So yeah, a lot of these players were were well versed, and and when they had the opportunity to to win, Jessica was gone. Like top eight, yeah, you're in you're in top eight. Your opponent had the upper hand, and you're out. Yeah, um, so the finals ended up being between uh, Paul Aronson from the US, uh, piloting Bistol, Bistial Dragon Link, and Juan Mateo Augusto Venera Pastor from Peru on a, Ten Year Sword Soul. It was a pretty one sided final as well. Like, yeah, like, never in really some saw respects. Because like, he was in it. <laughs> USA. Yeah. USA. Like, it does feel like sometimes Sword Soul is a big glass cannony. Like if you can disrupt them super early and they just don't have the right cards, they're gonna just capitulate. Yeah. They're just gonna fall apart. And like, um, was it in that game two where he just opened like two two ofs, and then like two other cards didn't really do anything? Yeah, it was like evenly. It's one evenly... of those things. Like you can really spiral out of control with Tenyi, but you need to open the right cards, and he just didn't. No, not not really. So yeah, um, as hinted, uh, Bistial Dragon Link did end up uh, winning. Um, there were some pretty significant hits to that deck too, but at the same time, you can play around those. Like Chaos Base searches you your Lubellion, which is a one of, which searches your Magnemort or your Druus, which are also one obs. Um, and other than that, I don't know if the deck was hit in much other sort of capacity, was it? Like, I think most other dragons are still what they are in every other um, no, I sort think, of TCG to OCG. I think it was all the same, but, like, realistically, like, Mag's not really needed. That deck does all of its stuff from the extra deck and off, like, one-card summons, so... Yeah. When you can also make H seal on them, just threaten that you're going to pass and get nibbed, and then just be like, oh, okay, I'll win. Uh, that, that does a lot. <laughs> That does yeah. a lot. So yeah, um, well done to Paul for the win. Um, so with that in mind, oh yeah, applause, applause. Um, so with that in mind, we do have some uh, new prize cards that were given out at the tournament. Um, so as they do every year, there's new match winner cards. Um, so I'll get them reprinted I'm just trying to pull up the That's name fine. of these. Um, so one of them, um, the second place one, uh, was Gate Brigio, the Waterfront War Beast, uh, which is the new Dino match winning card. Yeah, it's like a Dino um, Tribute 3 attack for game. Yep, level Wait, 7 what? Dino needs it's to tribute Dino's. Dino that tributes 3. Oh. It's Victory Dragon, but yeah. it's a Dino. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then for first, first place, place uh, they, have they have a Spellcaster, a spellcaster one, one, which is effectively just a rebrand of Dark Magician, Magician uh, both in Victory artwork, Dragon, but it's Dark Magician. Uh, and in stats. <laughs> Uh, so, Masterful Magician, Servant of the Sanctuary. Uh, same sort of thing, level 7 Dark Spellcaster, 2500 attack, 2000 defense. 2000 um, defense? Same thing. Outrageous. Yeah, no, he's, no he's only the ultimate magician in terms of attack, not defense. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. 
Um, so yeah, very nice looking cards, um, but both main deck monsters, whereas in the past couple of years at least, they seem to have been trying some different stuff. Were they pendulum um, monsters? Like with links and uh, pendulums and stuff like that. Were these ones pendulums? Uh, no, both of them are main deck monsters. Interesting. Because like, for a while there, they were just printing them all as pendulums to be like, they come back. No? Yep. Interesting. They did. A, they've done a couple links as well. I think uh, the last ones that we had, which were 2019, now um, they were pen. Uh, sorry, not pendulums. Link monsters from recollection. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, it was like the link. Link seven, big ship. I don't know if it was link seven, but it was a big link monster. Okay. Sure. Um, but then, yeah, um, Master Duel and Duel Links also got some specialty mats. The Master Duel ones have uh, Blackwing Full Armor Master. I, d- I don't get um, the current they... obsession with Master Duel and that card. They love that card. I don't understand Does it. it. Play? Um, no. No. It's, it's just the Blackwing Boss uh, Monster. Okay. That's it. Yeah, sure. it's just it's just there. It's the black wing yeah. card. That's and it's also really bizarre giving uh, Master Duel competitor a physical play mat. <laughs> Use it as a mouse mat. <laughs> that, that, that's also a thing. That's a playmat you can get in Master Duel. Like, yes. It's just oh, something it's everyone can get. It's not a play mat get. you can get in Master Duel. Or is it Duel, sleeves? Is it? You can get the sleeves and you get the icon Do, and uh, you get the background and you get uh, the... They... You got the Royal Rare as like your free card when they were doing a celebration thing a little while back. Yeah. Do they actually get Master Duel rewards for doing well in Worlds? I'm not sure. Nothing that they've stated, I, but it would make sense, I don't right? Think like, if you give them <laughs> something. Quite funny. Like, in Duel Links, it's um, like, oh, you get free supply? Um, just on that as well, with the Master Duel uh, Worlds, I don't think that I'm a big fan of the format that they do it in, the 3v3. I enjoyed it as it went on. Like, the fact that it became a case... Okay, because it was always effectively a best of nine. So you yes. always at least had the ability for all three games to be played unless your team just got fucking destroyed. At which point, you deserve to lose. Like, <laughs> So the issue I had with it is that... Like, I understand that they had to do it that way because, because it's, not it's not practical to do it any other way. way but, but having, having all, all three matches, matches on at, at the same time... time yes was really hard to watch like, it would have especially taken when like the match that like if the match is going on up the top like the main one that they had focus on because there was yeah. one big one and two little ones right yeah if the big one at the top which like i think it was um sprite versus runic was the very first one i saw yeah when that match started going poorly all i wanted to do was swap over to the other ones for something a little bit more interesting because i'd already written him off like, I'm like he's done Let's move on. <laughs> and you just can't in that format. You could on Master Duel, as far as I know. If you were watching along on Master Duel, you weren't watching with commentary, but you uh, did get to pick, oh, I want to okay. watch this guy. I guess, like, a solution to that could be, like, having, a, like, a stream A, a stream B, and a stream C, right? Yeah. And, like, yeah, one main I stream with commentary, if that makes sense. I, I was just about to say, yeah. like, it would have been cool if they had the ability, like, an app where you could just touch between the matches, but apparently you could on Master Duel. Yeah, but yeah, the thing you forego with that is the commentary, so you do lose out a little bit. But at the same time, a lot of the commentary is like, oh, he's taking some time to think, you can see that. Um, and like in Master Duel, there's less of the back and forth of being like, oh, I'm not sure if he could make that move and all that kind of thing. It's like, Mar- we know he can make that move. Marcello's favourite line is, he's taking some time to think here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other cool thing I noticed too when I logged into Master Duel last night is that you can actually watch back on the world matches. They have them oh, saved that you can go into the little Master Duel um, Worlds tab down the bottom and you can re-watch those finals matches and the um, like the stuff they did before as well. So if you wanted to catch up or anything or if you want to just watch the matches again, you can go back and do that. I think in retrospect, they probably should have done the final as a... You play game one, you play game two, you play game three, you play game four, you, all, th- all the way through to nine. But I guess that yep. takes away from that urgency of, oh no. Yeah, you lose I'm... that, like, yeah, that thing of being like, oh my god, um, his teammate just lost, he needs to win this to keep him in, like that yes. sort of excitement aspect I, of it. I guess it but at also... the same time, it was. I guess it was <laughs> also like a bit of a time constraint thing as well, right? If they did it one exactly, by one, yeah. By one, if by you one. did like a best of nine live, it would take 
so long. <laughs> well, at least it's all only game ones. It's just one game, one game, one game, one game, one game. Yeah, like it'll, yeah, it'll I take suppose. And everything's time. automated. It's not like you need a way for them to shuffle and hand back the deck and then cut it and then hand the deck back over and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like you probably, you feasibly could do it, but I think in future they should probably move it to like a more standard, uh, like, uh, sort of, you know, the thing. Given, like a standard setup. Given how grandiose they were trying to make like the final as well, and that's like the I guess the new thing that's arrived since the last time we had a Worlds, it would be big for them to have been like, no, we're going to play all nine games individually on stage. Let's make like yeah. a huge thing of it. They did make a huge deal out of Rush Duel, so... Not really. I mean, comparatively. Well, one, once you saw the final grand yeah. stage of Worlds, it made that Rush Duel's thing look kind of crap, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, Duel Links also got a physical map for reasons I don't understand, <laughs> uh, which has Yuya and Yuya and Odd Eyes Raging Dragon. So yeah. these pendulums have only just made their way on there, as well as um, some links Pendul- and things. Yeah, I was gonna say pendulums made their way on there uh, like three years ago. <laughs> ah, it's, it's new to me. Um, I, I was watching Worlds and I saw someone put a synchro, someone put a clear wing in the extra monster zone. I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> they have EMZs that and salad. A- that is the thing. I, I was going to look up what was going to, like, the top decks of uh, Duel Links, but then I realised I just don't care. So, um, uh, top decks of Duel Links is Crusadia, because they have all Crusadia cards and Kaijus. And Mech Knights. I tuned in for uh, a Crusade. It was Crusadia versus Speedroid, and the guy made, like, Crystal Wing and then other shit, and I was like, oh, crap, Crystal Wing's in this game, and then his opponent went, Kaiju make the Crusadia a- no, Crusadia Avramax? No, no, the other one. The three. The Link 3. And just went punch for game, and I was Equ- like... Equimax, yeah. Yeah. Equimax. Like, mm. At least Equimax can only pick but- up two arrows, but when one's a kaiju. <clears throat> doesn't really matter. <laughs> true. Very true. Um, so, uh, we'll move on to some product news, I guess. Um, so we'll start with the upcoming Soul Burning Volcano oh, set. Wait. Uh, um, Konami's so, big mm-hmm. announcement was that they're doing a tournament in the Tokyo Dome for the 25th anniversary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was, was the big announcement, that they, uh, OCG get a tournament that we don't. Hooray. Um, so, uh, Soul Burning Volcano, uh, comes out not too far from now. Uh, so we now have the full set contents, uh, and they are bad. Is oh, that, yeah. That's re- hot garbage. Is that, is that the salad reprint set? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where they're reprinting the structure deck in booster packs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're giving them a ghost rare of the Link 2. Yeah. Oh, the Sunlight Wolf? Yeah. Why not yeah. Sunlight, Sunlight Wolf, Wolf as a ghost rare is the highest rarity that's available within that whole set. Um, there's a whole bunch of salad ultras and some uh, ultras for the Volcanics. Um, yeah. I haven't seen... Oh, there's like maybe one or two ultras for Battle and Boxes, but... For the most oh, part, yeah. this is just tragic. <laughs> Let's all build battle and boxes. It's so bad. Like, it's honestly a borderline a waste of cardboard. Or it could it's just be a full waste of cardboard. Sh- shocking. Is Absolutely anyone actually shocking. going to buy this? Not even Josh would buy this, because Josh does buy products. No. Yeah. Josh will hope that someone else buys it to then sell to him, but he won't crack it. Yeah, I think the issue is that the target market of salad doesn't buy you gear product. Yeah, they are aiming this at the wrong people. Yeah. And the thing is, if they wanted to aim it at the right people, they could have just added more, more generic, generic stuff, stuff in there, there that, that would have been appealing to buy. Like, but there's this... no like good generic reprints. So this it's set doesn't all have just the generic Pyro shit. Searcher, does it? Uh, no, I think that one's coming out um, in the um, main set, isn't it? It doesn't even have the card that you would expect to buy it for. Sick. Thanks, I'm just Konami. double checking. I could be wrong, but I'm just double checking. I don't think I am. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's in there. I'm fairly sure I saw the, no, I saw the set. No, no, it's in um, Age of Overlords. Sure. Big That's the new set currently out here, right? Uh, hmm? Yeah, it's yeah. out here. Yeah, the set has just come out here. Which has oh yeah the one card support Could... for thing. that that stuff's actually really cheap here. Oh, yeah, and it's got the, the new eleventh card, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, we saw that lab card today for like fifty cents. Like, okay. Oh yeah, sure. Makes sense. Well, they do multiple rarity printings over there, so yeah, you're yeah. gonna find multiple rarities. Revolution Synchron here sort of is suit a, whatever budget. Is a dollar. Thrust is also like a dollar. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Also makes sense. If you uh, want to play so moving cheap, on, it's really cheap. Hmm? We're, so we're fairly sure we found a place today that was selling 
a pearly core for eight bucks. Ooh. And did you tell Brag? Uh no, we didn't tell Brag. We probably should tell Brag. Um, but yeah. Yeah, they had a pearly core for eight bucks, and I think they had like a common rescue ace core for eight bucks. But we didn't could like have done we, it. you could only see the front card, and we were like, what if it's not a core? Let's just leave this behind. <laughs> So eight dollars though, surely you just get it. I was already spending a hundred dollars at the store, so I spent too much money on crane games. Yeah, so games. what's another eight? Yeah, Tom, what's your problem? Tom did spend a lot of money on crane games, and Tom's Tom's gotten worse at crane games over the years. <laughs> uh, at one point, man's like, you... man's like, it's perfectly set up. And he's like, I've got this. Misses the misses the plush. Just missed it. <laughs> my sense, my depth perception is horrible. Much was, like Jake I was like, okay. Good work. Oh god. Meanwhile, I got my keys, um, George. <laughs> so, uh, moving on. Uh, a little while back, we got the hint from V Jump that there was a new rescue monster coming. We now have the full effects of oh. Rescue Hedgehog. We got it. What's it yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. What's it do? What's it do? So, um, once per turn, uh, banish this card. Special summon two level three or lower monsters from your deck with the same type, attribute, and level. One, one vanilla, vanilla and one, one effect. effect. But the effect monster's effects are negated and destroy them during the end phase. So that's this month's V Jump promo? Yes. Okay. I need to buy V Jump when we get back okay. to Akihabara. Yes. Yeah. So that's actually really good. And, like, you could actually see quite a few decks making use of this because, like, there's some stuff that can trigger if it gets sent to the graveyard. Sometimes you just need, like, a tuner and a non tuner that's, like, semi non restrictive. Um, so I can see this seeing some play. I wonder when we'll get it reprinted. Probably end of the year reprint set. We might get it in Age of Overlords. Oh, maybe. We we haven't even gotten the or well, the one that was last right. month's V Jump promo yet. So I I doubt we're going to get it for Age of Overlord. Probably in end of next month, next year. Well, right. they haven't even announced the card yet, Jake. How are they going to reprint it in a set that's already through the printing press? <laughs> when is Age of Overlord out? Uh, I'm gonna Not say for another like couple of months. Two months away. Because we only Thanks. just got Duelist Nexus, right? Yeah, it'd be it'd be two months away. Let's yes. just say two months away from now. But yeah. If nothing else, he's very cute. So I'm looking forward to when he gets oh, released. I've got to go check out the artwork for this now. It's it's like Rescue Ace and uh, Rescue. It's just Hamster a little rescue. Rescue Ace. Ace. Yeah, Rescue. Rescue. They're all Rescue Ace cards. They're the he's support. He's got Fireman on the brain. Or the Rescue Ace. Um, yeah, it's just the Hedgehog. One. Okay. We'll go by the jump promise. Yeah. V jump here's like five bucks, by the way. Just get it then. Get yeah. your Brunac promo. I already did. I should <laughs> get one. Oh, perfect. There you go. Oh yeah, you put that in chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so next we have an announcement of another OCG product coming towards the end of the year. Uh, so this is Terminal World. Uh, so this is uh, like the dual terminal uh, reprints set. and retrains of cards from the Terminal uh, Dual Terminal Law. Uh, the ones that they've mentioned by name in the little press thing are Ice Barrier and Infernoid. Um, but there's a whole bunch of other archetypes that are in there, including um, like Infernoid and set. Ritual Beasts. Infernoid hmm? is dual terminal? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all part of the same lore. Oh. Not, not I actually... thought Infernoid was in the same lore as uh, like Shadol and stuff. Which is part of the same as Gem Knight, which is part of the same as Ice Barriers, which is part of the same as the Ally of Justice. It's all the same. Okay, sure. I thought Dual Terminals were just a machine that you put money in and they give you the cards out. Yeah, but they had their own law oh, behind okay. the cards you got. Oh, yeah. I thought you no, just there, went, there was a you law. Just there was a law to it. You could play the actual thing and learn. Because I know that you, or could, you could just, just hit the yeah. You could just hit the skip button. Yeah, no one ever actually. Out. No one ever actually did the duels. They just were like, no, no, I just skip, want the pack list. Skip, just skip, skip. Just give me, skip. just give me the trish, trish. Just give me the trish. Trish, 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 trish. Um, Feed hundred dollars. Trish, 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 trish. Uh, so, oh, okay. So it's not saying that there's new cards, but it is saying there's new artwork of existing cards. Uh, so we've got oh, some alternate arts on the way. Um, you get at least one super... All of these are for OCG, so it doesn't matter. But they do get a, a piece of Exodia to commemorate the 25th anniversary, um, which is an ultra rare as opposed to a 25th uh, QCR. It's not a quartz here, is he? Oh, no. Oh, so no, they are doing Quartzy Rezies. It's just the guaranteed piece of Exodia. It doesn't seem to be a Quartzy Rezies. Because okay. they get 12 commons in quarter, quarter Century. 
uh, 24 commons in ultra rare, ultra parallel rare, secret rare, or secret parallel rare, and all that kind of stuff that they usually do. You know, multiple printings, much be nice. Um, so yeah, some more details are coming out in the next couple of weeks in the next uh, Shonen Jump mag. So you'll be able to pick that up and tell us. Yep, we will pick it up and we will uh, we will tell the world of what I had put through Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that moves us on to our Discord. If you weren't aware, we do have a Discord. Link will be in the description below. Feel free to jump in, say hi, and ask us questions. Actually, the new news tab has come up. I'm just double checking. <gasps> what Last is it? little news. It's uh, they're getting cash tier is coming out on the tenth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Fenrir yeah, has yeah. been put to two. Um, are we also getting the new Draco Slayer stuff? Um, which is cool. Um, and Chaos Angel seems to be getting a uh, sort of getting accelerated time frame. through, yeah. But like, I'll take it because it works in Dragon Maid, so sure. Yeah, Chaos you take Angel. it. Um, in saying that, though, it's not to say that Cash Tier is coming in full power because Cash Tier Fenrir will be sim- semi limited upon release. I already told the people, Jake. I already told the people. Well, Does that I actually do anything? No, so shut up. It doesn't do anything. Unicorn's the one that matters. Correct. Um, so. Back to our Discord. Uh, as I said, feel free to jump in and ask us some questions. Our first question this week comes to us from Ryan Guan. Um, what did he used to call himself? I'm sure I've seen that picture before, but he's changed his name. Um, which set of god cards is your favourite? The Egyptian gods, sacred gods, or Norse gods? I'll be real. I read, um, I read this question and already. And which god is your overall favourite? Huh? I, I read this question already, and I, I immediately started disregarding it because the answer is the Egyptian gods. If you think the other two are better, then you suck. Um, it's it's not a question of which is better or worse. It's which is your favorite. Well, it's the Egyptian gods, and again, still, if you think it's one of the other two, you should be shot. Um, <laughs> so then I was like, but which printing of the Egyptian gods is my favorite? Because it's the uh, jump promo printings. The jump promo printings are the best. The jump promos are real nice. Um, but yeah, I think mine of the the Egyptian gods too, and it's purely like they're all trash. They're all fucking terrible cards. But the Egyptian ones have nostalgia factor for me because that's the era of which I came into the game. Um, so I guess of those three then, Ra, Obelisk, and uh, Slifar, which, uh, which of those three is your favourite? Uh, I change on a whim. I think it's I think it's Slifar. But there's days when it's Obelisk and there's one time a year it's Ra. <laughs> <laughs> the day of the sun. Um, yeah. yeah, I think one's probably going to be Slifer as well. Just seems to have the most utility of any of them. It like, pops. You sort of just slap Ra and Obelisk on to like end a game, whereas you could like feasibly summon Slifer at the very beginning and just sit on it for a little bit. Just floodgate out your opponent's salad deck. That that card does legitimately almost floodgate out salad. It just it kills salad. Everything's a thousand pop, pop, pop. They summon Bailings, pop. Hear me out. Very fun. Hear me out. Ra comes from the sphere mode, so it has to be Ra. Yeah, true. Sphere mode does see the most play. Tom's got to say. True. Very true. Uh, next question comes from 6 r 6 With Synchro being the current extra deck favourite in the current product cycle, how long do you think will it take before we get another oopsie like Halka Fibrax? Um, we're kind of already there. Um... There's what, the a few card? too many good synchro How? support cards floating around at the moment, oh, and it's one. all going to come to a crux. I think we're, we're, there's a bit of an issue with uh, when Revolution Synchron starts to hit like the wide open market. That card's gone. It's a problem. It's not a huge mm-hmm. problem, but it's a problem. And I'm going to try and pick some up when I get back because I want to mess around with some weird Revolution Synchron shit. It's going to be fun. Yep. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to when that comes out, but I can see it becoming a problem eventually. Like, realistically, if it becomes too prevalent, uh, eventually the King Calamity Archfiend's going to have to go. And that's fine. There's no problem at all. Ban it. Doesn't matter. Man's hating on my my boys. Your boys? My Resonators. (laughs) When have you ever played Resonators? I played Resonators as, like, a secondary deck uh, around the time that we first versed at YCS. Ah. I had it in my bag. When was this? This is 2017. Like 2017, yeah. 
Yeah. Jake was playing Mermail, a significantly better deck. Jake, what yeah. happened to you? I did. <laughs> how, how dare you? How Jake, the fuck dare Jake, you? Jake fell off. You stupid bitch. <laughs> I, I used to be like, damn, Jake has maybe some kind of rarity of Mermail. Damn, I respect that. And then he sold it. Yep. He sold it for nose beers. <laughs> I, how, how, don't you dare. <laughs> That is slanderous. I will sue you. Uh, I've just realised the way that Jake's sitting and the way this is going to look on recording just looks like he's just looked down at me the entire time. Okay, next question, Jake. Uh, Bragg asks us why Konami hasn't figured out dual discs yet. Oh, uh, They did figure out dual discs. Me and Tom bought them. We're going to yeah. show everyone how it works. No, he did. Uh, Konami did, rather. Uh, it's called the Metaverse. We're just going to move Yu-Gi-Oh! into the Metaverse, and we're all going to play there. No, I don't, I don't want to buy an Oculus product. I already own one, I, mean, I don't want to admit it. How dare you, Tom? <laughs> uh, and then our here. last question this week comes to us from Tuesday's Noob. Um, now the Worlds is over, how long before a new ban list uh, comes out? Uh, what, what day is today? Uh... Approximately the 7th of August. Uh, it's four weeks away. That is really close. Four weeks. When I when I come back from Japan, we're gonna do a we'll do a ban list prediction episode. And they're gonna unban Mystic Mine. Woo! No. They're really not. Oh come on. Don't oh come on me, you stupid bitch. You had it way longer than you were supposed to. I think I think Jake's now made a point of trying to turn a bit more when he talks. Instead of just looking off to the <laughs> Okay. But yeah, four weeks away. We'll do a ban list. So yeah, video um, feel free to let us know what you believe will be addressed in that coming ban list, uh, which we'll discuss in a couple weeks. Eradicate, eradicate, um, eradicate, eradicate. Are we doing a pod next week while you're still in Japan, or are you back by then? Uh, I'll still be in Japan, but you probably won't be on the podcast next week. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, Jacob. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll be hosting it probably with it... Bragg and uh, either Blake or Tom. Is it because I didn't have power? Uh, no, nah, this is just an awkward setup, and that way we can just record it on the fly somewhere. Oh, uh, and we can do it in the YouTube studio. Oh, yeah, we were going to do this at the YouTube studio in, uh, in Akihabara last night. But? But I got too drunk. <laughs> See? Instead, you're doing it in kimonos with no underwear on. I got underwear on. I'm about to go to the pool. Are you actually? I'm going to edit this podcast, and then I'm going to go to the pool. Is it open still? Probably not. <laughs> you, can go to find the, out. you can go to the onsen oh, I, uh, I had the onsen up on the TV Thank you all very much before. for listening and watching to this week's uh, Scuffed Japan edition um, Join us all well not all of us because I'm probably about to be fighting back uh, next week uh, and we'll catch you all then Peace Bye Adios Bye I say no